Okay. Uh, we're going to be updating the NES Classic again. Uh, Hackchi 2 has been updated to support over 600 games. Uh, people say even around 800, possibly. <clears throat> it's version 2.11, and it just came out, uh, I think, a few days ago, three days ago. And you'll be able to find it at this address right here, which I'll link in the video. Okay, sorry. So if you look, the uh, the Nintendo's bone is, is stock. I returned it to stock so that we'd be starting from afresh. And I'm going to be going through the entire process. Uh, There's a lot of questions on my last video um, regarding getting the USB driver to work, and so I just figured I'd do the whole the whole process. Um, okay, so let's start. Okay, so now let's just look at the different changes. So there's now folders and pages support. <coughs> I guess the problem with the last version and why you could only get a certain amount was um, they could only fit like 80 games or 90 games uh, because of the image covers on the front. So once they moved to folders, they figured out that they can actually just add tons of folders. Uh, Hackchi automatically uh, groups it by groups of 30, or you can change it to, to be higher or lower. And uh, they also added a feature where it will automatically download the art for you, which is a nice feature. Uh, they added a bunch of patches for problematic games. So, like, Battletoads works just fine now. Um, what else? Let's look. Confirm Mapper. They added uh, Mapper 86. Uh, 85, 95, and 206 will be automatically patched to, to be 86. So that adds a, that adds a lot of games. Um, you can, you can uh, just have zip Z7 or... Uh, RAR files instead of actually just uh, the actual ROMs. Um, yeah, it fix has support for some of the bad ROM ROMs with bad uh, size, so that's nice. There's Famicom full Famicom Mini support added. Um, this is uh, helpful for games that want to for you to be able to start on the two-player side. There's an auto fire now. Uh, which is enabled, but I have this new uh, um, the Edge, which has auto fire in it, so I don't think I'll be using that. Uh, what another feature I'm really excited about is um, you can do scripting for the controller. The best thing about it is you're able to hit reset and uh, from the controller. So if you have this next to a TV and you get like you know USB extension or you're using a wireless adapter, you can reset the, the back to the main menu by just doing a button combination. Whereas opposed, you would you would previously would have had to hit reset on the uh, controller. Um, let me see what else. You can disable the menu music, which is nice. Um, where was the other thing that I was really excited about? They they fixed it so that um, they t you can take out that uh, epilepsy uh, filter, which was causing you know making it for shmups like pretty much unplayable for me. Um, so that's now supported. All right. So. You just go here and go to uh, HackG2 and download the new version. All right. And I have it downloaded right here. So you just double click the 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 zip file or RAR, you know, use WinRAR or whatever and you just copy this over or extract it. And you'll get this folder right here. <clears throat> From this folder, you just click the HackG and this is what you'll see. It'll say, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Hack G2. Uh, so the NES mini pimp tool. So let's see what's different. So you have now under file, you have download uh, covers for all games. You can dump the original kernel, flash the original kernel, flash custom kernel or uninstall. From settings, you have uh, you can choose what kind of console you have, whether whether it's the NES Mini or the Famicom. Epilepsy program uh, protection will do um, disable for all games. Controller hacks use 
custom button to reset. So let's do that. How do we program that? Okay, oh, right underneath it, select reset button combination. So we'll do up, select, and start. Okay. Hey, Night Spinner, how you doing? Okay, GUI hacks. Remove thumbnails at bottom, disable menu music. We'll disable the menu music um, solely for the fact that I plan to export this. And I don't want it to get muted. Maximum games per page. Now, I've heard you have best luck doing 30. So we'll just keep it at the default 30. 8-bit uh, PNG compression to have you know lower quality. You could turn that on if you wanted to. I haven't seen a problem with it. Uh, being off and then you can also do um, since it's so is open source you can do global command line arguments all right so let's just uh, let's add some games so we'll just do a big folder just to prove that it can do a ton of these now so I'm going through my backed up ROMs a through or number through D so we'll go all the way to Castlevania So you will get some uh, some files that will give you errors, and you just have to you know uh, hit OK, and it says like it, you'll you'll get an argument for each one. So Archon uses a uh, four score mode, and this feature is not supported. Do you want to write this game anyways? So any one that says arguments, you just hit no. Batman Return of the Joker's Mapper sixty nine that's not supported. You just hit no. There's a patch for Battletoads. Uh, do you want this? We want to patch this game hit yes bill and ted yes okay so it added 125 games we could do more but for the sake of the video we'll just do this all right so yeah nasty wolfram it's been hacked for a little while now it used to be so that you could only have like 60 to 80 games and now you could have like 800 games they think that the um they think that the storage inside of the NES Classic is around uh, 512 megabytes. All right, so you have to turn it off. So you have the USB plugged into the back of the computer. You hold reset and you hit power. And you should hear it recognized over there. Okay, um, so also let me um, go into the driver installation. So, the previous version didn't include, it included uh, the DLLs, but not the actual drivers. So, the first thing you have to do before you do any of this is install this mini, uh, NES mini driver. I'm not going to do it because I've already done it. So, you would just hit, it says it's found, you would just hit enter, uh, and that would install the driver. Um, previously, you had to use Zadig, Z A D I G, and install Win USB. Okay. So you click it. Okay. So you've added more games. You hit uh, synchronize selected games of the NES Mini. First, all you need to do is dump the kernel image, it says. You only need to do this once. Continue. Now, since um, mine has originally been hacked and I didn't ever put back the original default, it's going to say that the uh, the hashtag or the sum MDF doesn't doesn't isn't correct, but it is. No, they haven't messed with the CRT filters yet. I, I hope that actually that's a really so that would be a really nice feature because the CRT filter is horrible. So it says the yeah, MD5 is unknown, but that's fine. You won't get that image if you're starting with a stock 
uh, NES Classic. So it promises you that it wants to dump the kernel, so you just do that. So while it's doing this, uh, I'll just go over this uh, controller I got. So this is a um, Emio EMIO The Edge. It is a clone of the NAS Advantage. Um, the best thing about it is that it supports uh, swappable Sanwa joysticks and buttons. So I actually, uh, I actually already did it. You just do the, uh, you remove the six screws on the bottom, and then they just hot swap. So I already put I put a Sanwa JLF in here, and Sanwa OBS thirty. The stock buttons that this comes this the buttons and controller that this thing comes with is just horrible. Like it's not even worth using. Um, I also had a friend that just bought this. They used the shell uh, for an NES. They used this shell and then they put in the guts of an NES Advantage. So they're using it on the original Nintendo. Now you can use this, you can use this, and you can use the original controller that comes with the NES Classic. You can use that uh, with an original NES using plugging it into a Wiimote and then using the retro receiver, which is a 8-bit though wireless device. Uh, I've used that, so I've, I've been able to use this on my original Nintendo. So it's done. Uh, now you can upload the games to the mini. Press OK to continue. So now it's going to be building the custom kernel and uploading the games. You heard there was a way to make it on the real NES. Yeah, it's a mechanical keyboard. It's like the loudest keyboard. I got blue. It's um, it's like an Amazon special. It's nothing crazy. Uh, I got it has generic blue uh, micro switches in it. I would recommend brown uh, going in the future because this this is just too loud. And I actually even put um little rubber rings underneath the underneath underneath each key to dampen it. So it's going to take a little while. The, the bigger um, collection of games, the longer it's going to take. Also, if you have over like a certain amount, it's going to have to do multiple flash session, sessions. So that you'll just need to turn off the Nintendo and then hold reset and turn it back on to get it back into a flashable mode. Yeah, yeah, you can make you can make this work with the original NES, um, just by pad hacking if you wanted to. Or you can just do the uh, wireless adaptation. It's pretty nice. It's a nice little joystick. I think I want to get a shorter um, shaft, so it's a little bit more like the original. Yeah, I need to build a Chifulu stick. Okay, so done. Wait until the power LED goes out. Restart your NES. So the light is still on, so we'll wait for that. Okay, it's off. So we'll just power cycle it to get into it working.
Oh, we forgot to download art. Dang it. So we got to do that again. <laughs> all right, so uh, we're going to download coverage for all the games. There we go. I don't know how many games to put on this thing. The more you have, the the bigger it's going to be to get through. I kind of like it with the uh, with only like 80 games or so on it. And that way, you're just able to choose from an easy selection. This is kind of like having a, a you know a giant flash cart where you're just having good and bad games on there, and it's harder to select what you want to play. But it's nice that there's no limit now, basically. LS40. I only my only some issue that I have is an LS56-01, and that feels like a that feels like a, this Sanwa JLF that I modded with a heavier spring and a bigger actuator. But yeah, the the stock LS56 uh, really is really nice. I just. I just redid this. My this was a, like a Naomi. It was a brawl stick back in the day, and then I themed it Naomi because uh, it was right next to my Naomi arcade cabs. And now I just redid it uh, with uh, Rico from Mushi Masama. I didn't have a. Um, I couldn't find my Exacto knife, so I had to like use a scissor for all the buttons. So it's a little rough around the edges, but I use um, Kinko's has like this laminate that you can you can print out the the image and then use like this laminate that they put it into a sheet of a laminate and it has an adhesive on the back and it only ended up costing like a dollar fifty so i didn't really care if i mess it up because i could just do it again i still need to print out art for my injustice stick too hope you guys are doing well tired I'm hungover I uh, went out last night and went to a concert <laughs> after this uh, I'll be playing splatterhouse on the on the arcade cab I just wanted to update my tutorial the last tutorial has done really well it's almost at 10,000 hits on YouTube The ghetto stick. I'm scared to look at it on stream. <laughs> Me put it off stream. <laughs> oh, geez, are you kidding? <laughs> Friggin, you gotta be super. We sh somebody should do a, a cave box, like a <laughs> as their stick for that. It would make people so unhappy. Oh, it's 32 and OBS 30s on the pad hack. <laughs> okay, so this is done. So we'll reflash it again. Oh, 
It's crazy windy outside right now. Cardboard box is getting an upgrade. Nice. Yeah, I, I just got an injustice stick for 25 bucks. I just haven't decided what art I want to use on it. I already changed out the joystick to JLF. It's nice because it uh the lights light up. This is one of my favorites. This is my virtual stick with a uh, LS56 in it. Then I have my uh, Namco PlayStation stick. Here's my crown jewel. This thing's so sexy. And it like hinges open. PS4 stick. Okay, done. Wait until the power LED goes off. So it's still on. Okay. Let's power cycle it. So this is it automatically downloading the art. Um, this is a grouping of 30 games. And then it will go into folders. So it will say, it will automatically create these folders and it will be all games alphabetically Athena to battle chess. So we go in here. And then what we were previously looking at was 10 yard fight to uh, whatever game that is. <laughs> So there's two balloon fights because I didn't remove the original 30. Also, um, with the last version, I had uh, trouble doing uh, Rekka because it had a, a signal, like a um, an apostrophe, and it didn't originally support that. I tried again with this new uh, 2.11 software, and it didn't have that issue. It actually crashed the NES last time, and I couldn't figure out why it was happening. No, I'm scared to click that link, Nasty. <laughs> Funny game we know. So some of these, okay, no, these are all folders, I guess. Trying to find a game I know. Ooh, Bucky over here. Let's 
This game's so good. It's really hard, though. It's safe for work. Okay, I'll check it out in a minute. Dude, how do you get out of this? I forgot that he has that charge jump. Something I didn't notice before uh, with this controller, it's really loud on the button presses. I might recommend getting uh, silent buttons because this, this default is really loud. Default OBS 30s. So we did a um, we did a. Uh, an actual uh, hack to reset the game, so we'll try that. So we hold up, and then hit select and start. There we go. We're back to the main menu. That's nice. So that's it. And it's classic with 125 games, but I mean, you can do up to, and I eventually will add as, you know, max it out to the, ma the maximum amount, 600 or 800 around that. Had a Famicom classic. I bet you they wanted like all the money. <laughs> Those things are pretty cool though. One thing I will though, uh, and one you'll notice in person is those controllers are super tiny, especially with like big hands. It was like a little tiny controller like this. And that'd be okay if like the D-pad was normal, but the D-pad's actually really tiny as well. A hundred bucks. Um, I forgot what they go for uh, online. They're, they are more expensive than the original. hundred bucks isn't real, isn't too bad. I think they cost like 60 to 70. Yeah, and they're hardwired, so no extensions. So that's it. Is there any questions or uh, anything? <coughs> I'll make a uh, YouTube export of this, and then add all uh, links to all of the uh, the software that you need, as well as the supported mappers. Uh, like last time. All of these are still supported. NMROM, MMC1, UXROM, CNROM, MMC3, MMC5, AXROM, MMC2, and MMC4. And then they added 88. They added 86, 88, 95, and 206. Oh jeez, Mahjong, custom Mahjong controller. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna uh, get the arcade stream ready and I'll be back in five to 10 minutes uh, on Splatterhouse.